um, just so that you know. All right, and welcome uh, to all of you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, tonight or today, um, depending on where people are in the world. Um, we have the great pleasure of this being our first virtual tour uh, of our incredible opportunity to swim with the wild dolphins in Mozambique uh, this year in August. Um, and what we're gonna do this evening is, uh, just to give you an idea of kind of the running program, is uh, do a little bit of a presentation. Myself and Jackie will also introduce ourselves and tell you a little bit about ourselves. And then we'll talk uh, a little bit more about what we're actually going to be doing on the trip and go through um, step by step what that means. Um, also what's included and not included uh, in the trip so that we can have um, clarity around that and then give everybody an opportunity to ask any questions at the end. So I'm just going to share my screen so that I can um, show you our uh, PowerPoint presentation. Let me just go share and hopefully this will work out at the beginning. There we go. Let me see. So can everybody see that? Yes. Wonderful. Yes. All right, I'm just going to move this box to the bottom left-hand side. I know it's cutting off things there, but I just need to, sorry, put you down here. <laughs> and go back up, All right. So can everybody see that? Yes. Yes, sir. All right, so this is our Igniting Your Soul Through the Spirit of Wild Dolphins uh, virtual tour. The running dates are the 19th of August to the 25th of August, and it is in support of the Dolphin Encounters Research Centre, which is actually based in Mozambique. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about uh, why we do that, because uh, it's a really important part of the model of adventures that we create. Uh, tonight's presentation will be co-hosted by myself and by Jackie Weaver. Um, and so thank you very much for joining us. We're thrilled to have you with us. So, um, yeah, just a quick introduction on uh, my avatar adventures and uh, what our principles and uh, philosophy is with regards to our uh, model of adventures that we put together. Then there'll be a short introduction of myself and Jackie, the virtual tour, tour and then the uh, question and answer session at the end. So, um, just a little bit about uh, my avatar adventure itself. Uh, we're a conscious-based organization offering what I call purposeful adventures. Uh, and normally it is in support of specific wildlife projects. So we will choose different organizations and trusts um, in which we uh, donate some of the uh, monies that are contributed for the adventure to those trusts to help support the amazing work they do. Most of the projects are very much uh, ground root level type projects because those are the ones we prefer. So our mission is to build a bridge through our adventures to reconnect humans and animals so as to empower the protect, their protection and survival. Uh, to preserve the endemic lands and as much of the wildlife as possible through deep connection, education and positive action. And our vision is to offer a variety of unique life-changing adventures that our guests can experience so that they transform at a deep level so as to inspire us to rise up and make a difference. And for me, that's really important. Um, it really is to help people and show people how they can personally make a significant difference even on a personal level. Our model is quite unique for our adventures. What we like to do is first of all, create awareness of the plight of an endangered wildlife species. Not all of the uh, animals that we focus on are endangered, but most unfortunately um, of the main <laughs> species of animals that uh, people are familiar with are walking their way quite quickly um, to the level of um, extinction or endangerment. So um, it's unfortunate, but we have a lot of animals to choose from in order to highlight. Um, and we just want to create that awareness around it. Um, the other sector of what we like to do is to support that uh, specific charity that really focuses on ground, uh, grassroots level um, type of projects. 
So it's not a big organization where you're sending the money to them and you don't know how much of the money is actually getting down at the grassroots level. Some of these include the Global White Lion Protection Trust, which we do in South Africa, the Sheldrick Wildlife Trust, which is our trip to Kenya with the elephants, and now the Dolphin Research Center, which is for uh, the dolphins in Mozambique. Uh, each adventure has a, a specific animal which we will learn from via our interspecies communication training and application during these adventures. Um, and even though we focus on one specific type of animal, like in this case, the dolphins, we'll also be uh, connecting with the whales, which we'll be spending quite a lot of time with, obviously a lot of fish and other ocean dwelling beings, as well as um, going on a one day at safari into um, a game reserve. So we'll have an, a real opportunity to again, uh, just connect with more animals and have more uh, communing opportunities with the land animals. Um, contribution is a big part of what we do as part of these adventures and giving back with our time and all resources. Uh, is the final unique element, um, which we include. And for this particular adventure, um, we are, of course, supporting um, a local business who will be our hosts for the adventure, as well as the charity that they have set up, which helps to protect and monitor the dolphins and basically the entire marine reserve. Um, at the same time, we'll also um, be cleaning up the beaches. Um, as we know, plastic is a very big problem right across the world, especially in our oceans. And so we'll be giving back some of our time by um, all getting together and having fun cleaning up all the rubbish on the beach. So that is always um, a part of our adventure model is to do something to give back to the local community while we are there. A little bit of uh, information about myself, if you haven't met me before. My name's Tamar Peters. Uh, my background uh, has fundamentally over the last 28 years been in event and business management. And I was brought, um, <clears throat> how can I put it, kicking and screaming uh, into a whole new way of uh, life about eight years ago in that my pretty much my entire world came crashing down uh, in my personal life and my professional life. And it was really time for uh, something different. And about six years ago, I decided to pack everything up, having lived in the UK for over 12 years. As I'm originally from uh, South Africa, even though I was born in Zimbabwe, I left when I was two, so mostly grew up in South Africa. And then, yes, 12 years in the UK and decided that I really needed a complete change of my life. And so I then came over to Spain, where I have been for the last six years. Um, and um, I felt very ill, uh, almost straight away uh, with acute anemia, uh, which is caused by chronic gastritis. And this really has uh, changed my life considerably uh, to look for a different way of living and being. I had a spiritual awakening about eight years ago, um, which really developed over the years. And my need to reconnect with nature became very profound, especially through my illness. And I found the more time I spent in nature, the more time I was grounded into Mother Earth, the more time I was surrounded by nature, the better I felt. And particularly in the sea, on the beach, in the sunshine, um, it, was, it has been very um, healing for me. And then I had a, an amazing encounter with a beautiful uh, white golden retriever. And golden retrievers are my favorite large dog. I know you're not supposed to have favorites, but I have a favorite. Um, I also like lots of other dogs, but you know, white golden retrievers are, be are just beautiful for me. And so um, I had this conversation with this amazing dog called Max. Uh, which really just turned my world upside down. Um, basically, he was lost and he needed some help. Uh, he had a little name tag, so we phoned uh, the telephone number. And in the meantime, he, I had the story going inside my head that I thought I was going mad, making up. And I had this whole little um, theater thing that happened, literally visions, if you like, um, of the story of what happened to this dog. Um, the theory part was when um, somebody arrived to pick him up and actually shared exactly the same story with us of what had actually happened to him. 
and, and this for me was completely life changing because uh, it was a a moment in time where um, I was hysterically um, uh, upset and amazed and you know profoundly changed and it was then that I, I started meditating and doing research on interspecies communication um, and then I had lots of memories that came back from my childhood you know having uh, suppressed those for many years um, the natural connection I had with animals when I was very young I used to build forts uh, out in the um, near the river which we used to live by and speak to all the animals all the time speak to my dogs all the time um, but you know as uh, what happens in most cases my mum said you know for goodness sake please stop embarrassing us um, and so stop communicating um, and so I had all these memories flooding back in so it was an extraordinary um, reawakening if you like for me um, back into animal communication and so I studied it over a number of years and then I started getting very uh, clear uh, meditational messages um, and visions through my dreams uh, of a white lion um, that kept coming to me and kept saying, you need to come back to Africa. <laughs> and I was, you know, slightly intimidated and started doing research around um, white lions and found the Global White Lion Protection Trust run by Linda Tucker in South Africa. And um, that started my journey. I went back to South Africa. I met with Linda and I spent six amazing days with these amazing um, sacred beings, if you like. And um, my world was changed forever. And I have been doing adventures ever since then. So that's just a little bit about me. Um, I'm going to pass you on to uh, Jackie now and she can share a little bit more about herself. So Jackie, if you'd like to go ahead. <clears throat> Hi everybody and like thank you for coming to join us and um, find out about this lovely adventure that I've been asked to join in on. Um, I know some of you know me, some of you have read my books and stuff, but I'll just tell you a bit about me. Um, like Tamar, I had a real life-changing experience back um, when I was early 40s. Um, I got cancer really badly, I was given four weeks to live. They only told me that afterwards, but I was stage four and basically they, you know, they, it was spread loads of places and um, they just gave me no hope. But I survived um, with uh, chemotherapy, a load of natural healing and some other things as well. So, and I often say to people, people go, oh gosh, you know, that must have been terrible. But I say it didn't take my life, it gave me my life because it just completely opened my mind up to spirit. And again, like Tamar, when I was a child, I'd know things, but I didn't know why I knew things. And it's quite difficult because the parents say, well, how do you know that? And I, go, I just do. And um, so again, I was brought up on a farm. Everything in my life's been animals. And I just used to obviously communicate with the animals because I'd understand stuff. But as children, we can't explain. And then, so roll on. So after my illness, I was basically, physically, I couldn't really do terribly much. And Beautifully, spirit organized, um, well, I booked her, but um, through a friend, an animal communicator to come and see um, my horses and my dog. And she chatted to the horses and then chatting to my beautiful dog, Sally, who sadly has gone to heaven now. Um, and Sally just said to her that I could do this. And animals are brilliant. They'll say, and I, I teach all the time and I get it with clients. And they'll just casually say, oh, she hears things. She knows things. And there's really simple questions you can ask, like, do you have dreams come true? Do you know things before they happen? And things like that. And basically, so many of us are psychically open. We just don't understand. So my job is just to show you how you've got the toolbox, how to use it. And just, and if you... Have need bringing on in that sphere to understand of how your mind works and stuff, I can help you in that direction as well. So, as I say, I start, started this work and it's basically, I, I'm just staggered. I've been doing this for 12 years now and it just, it just grew and grew. And I, after sort of a few months, people say, oh, where's your website? And I'm like, I don't have a website. Oh, you need a website. Okay. And then it just all sort of spread word, word of mouth. And um, then I started writing books about my work. And then I landed up doing one book. 
then I landed up on television and that spread from one place to the next. And I've actually done more television as an animal communicator and more uh, breadth of um, programs than any other animal communicator in the UK. I've done all sorts of things from Apollo Grady to This Morning to Loose Women to uh, even Russell Howard, a comedy show. I even did Tarry and stuff all to get animal communication out there because it's so important in my life that people realize that animals can communicate. So that is the wonderful, wonderful thing about this opportunity is um, that I know there's questions that we can ask these animals. There's so much as people that we need to understand. So I just relish the thought of being able to ask them, listen to the information, find out what we need to know, what we can do to change. And amazing, you know, anybody that works with spirit and animals and stuff knows that you can get amazing information. And I often get with my work and I'm like, do you know, I would have never thought of that. So this to me is an absolute joy and to help people join in and feel the precious, precious time and stuff we're going to do is just beyond words for me. <laughs> That's wonderful, Jackie. And we're thrilled to have you uh, join us. You know, you've got some incredible experience and your enthusiasm um, and your knowledge and of um you know how to interact particularly also with wild animals not you know not just domestic animals yeah um is a really important uh, key aspect to what we'll be doing um and we'll be sharing more about that um for those that are coming on the trip so thank you um really lovely uh, to find out a little bit more about you thank you <laughs> <laughs> okay so let's move on to um what i call the igniting your soul through the spirit of wild dolphins adventure. Um, and really, uh, you know, for me, this has been a childhood dream to create something uh, like this, particularly around dolphins, as they've been very close to my heart ever since I was knee high to a grasshopper. I'm not sure if everybody knows what that means, but when I was very little. Um, so the wonderful place that we have chosen um, to host our adventure is what we call Ponto de Oro Marine Reserve, and that's in southern Mozambique. Um, we all know, if you've been watching the news, the awful, awful uh, situation that's happened in uh, northern Mozambique um, with the cyclone, which is the largest uh, natural disaster in the southern hemisphere ever. So, you know, for me, it was very uh, uh, distressing to hear about what happened. And, of course, I was in immediate contact with Angie, um, who um, runs the Dolphin Encounter Research Centre in Mozambique, you know, to check if everything was okay with her. And she was saying that, you know, they were very lucky because they are really far down south, really close to the border of South Africa that thankfully they didn't get touched by it at all. But as you can imagine, um, they are having a, a tremendously difficult time. So uh, we will be talking more about how we can actually help um, raise some funds, uh, help some organizations um, that are helping those that have become seriously destitute, not just in Mozambique, but in Zimbabwe and in Malawi too, as the cyclone moved inland into Africa. But this is the beautiful um, southern Mozambique uh, area that we will be going to. That's actually the beach that we will be going uh, to visit um, and actually launching our uh, boat from. So the dolphin uh, encounter, um, Encounters, and it's spelt correctly, Research Centre, um, is a fantastic organisation run by um, a wonderful lady called Angie Gullen. Um, she has a real passion for uh, sea life and has a real interest in ensuring the safety of our waters um, along the Mozambican coast. Um, she has been active for the last 30 years in the area, um, ensuring there's a code of conduct and all kinds of laws to help protect the marine reserve um, that they've now set up. Uh, she's been a key uh, person involved in that and um, set up the Dolphin Care um, uh, Trust, which uh, now many of the um, tour operators and other people in Mozambique are members of. So, um, Angie started off in 1996 after she did a pilot program there studying 
the dolphins in Aponto de Oro. And in Mozambique at that time, things were very different. Um, she's worked very closely with governmental institutions um, just to you know, highlight the importance of the ethical marine mammal tourism. So if, we, if you know, they're going to allow people to come in and uh, experience the wonderful things that the um, marine uh, tourism uh, reserve offers, that there are strict codes of conduct in order to manage the impact on uh, the wildlife and, of course, the oceans themselves. Um, they are the original dolphin centre. Um, they were the pioneers uh, first setting up there when they first started with the swim programs of the dolphins. And the tours actually helped to sponsor further research and conservation efforts. Uh, ethical marine mammal tourism uh, is what she set up, it is a way forward that ensures the protection of marine mammals. And she encourages Mozambique to include marine mammals into national conservation laws and submitted uh, recommendations on adopting ethical marine mammal tourist protocols. So as of October 2013, the Council of the Ministers received the draft proposal for this regulation uh, for Mozambique as a whole, and now it has been implemented. Uh, they advocate the code of conduct to lessen the impact of the human encounters uh, and they promote the campaign for ethical marine uh, mammal tourism practices along the entire African coastline in hope to creating a safer world for all of the um, marine mammals. So that's just a little bit about the organisation that we will be spending time with. Um, La de Ora is our guest lodge that we will be staying at. It is uh, pretty basic, but very comfortable. Has a fantastic pool um, in a very natural um, location with lots of trees. Um, and uh, we will pretty much have the lodge, I think, to ourselves, other than possibly some of uh, Angie's uh, staff or other people that are coming in to visit. But otherwise, it will be very much uh, for us to use. Um, we will be having four transformational encounters with the dolphins uh, and whales and other sea creatures um, throughout the seven days. Um, and they will very much depend on the weather. So sometimes it will be very, uh, it will be morning mostly. It's the best time to go out and see them. Um, but sometimes it could be the afternoons depending on what the weather looks like and uh, if they're around, which is obviously really important. Um, and as you will see, Julie, we were talking earlier about, um, you know, how close the dolphins are to the beach. As you can see in that photo, they are pretty close. Um, we won't be uh, swimming with the whales, but we will go whale watching. Um, and there are um, stingrays and, and other amazing uh, animals uh, that hopefully we'll be lucky enough to see um, on any one of our uh, four encounters. Uh, additionally, we'll be going to the Maputo Special Reserve, um, which is a fantastic uh, game reserve that's just really coming and, and starting up, even though it's been around for a number of years. And I'll go into the history of it a little bit, but um, it'll be a really lovely opportunity for us, if you've never been on a game drive before, for us to go and spend the whole day there so that we get um, to encounter the uh, land mammals too, and opportunities to really connect and commune with them as well. So the Maputo Special Reserve um, is just over a thousand square kilometers of wilderness area, which is really lovely because it goes right up until, right up to the beach. So um, it has, you know, the marine coastal and inland areas, which is r rather lovely. Um, it used to be uh, an elephant reserve uh, when it was first started up. Um, but there were a number of uh, challenges over the years. And then the... Um, the local uh, war started happening in Maputo, um, which caused uh, a number of um, complications, as you can appreciate. Um, and so the reserve wasn't, you know, particularly focused on until more in, in more recent times. The reserve combines coastal lakes, wetlands, swamp forests, grasslands, and mangrove forests, and has a pristine coastline that supports a wild variety of birds, which is awesome. And um, there've been lots of uh, wildlife translocation efforts uh, from South Africa uh, to Mozambique uh, to really help to grow um, the numbers of game in that area. 
Um, there are about 700 African elephants there now, lots of birds, um, zebra, antelope, crocodiles, hippos, giraffe, warthog, kudu, inyala, blue wildebeest, and some buck. And soon there will be some other um, predators that will be introduced hmm. once um, everybody um, has established their um, footing into the uh, uh, reserve. Um, so giving them a good opportunity to uh, expand the amount of animals that will be available. Um, it is considered to be quite a success as a new reserve. And so it'll be very interesting to hear more about it when we're on the trip. This will be our daily schedule um, with regards to what we're going to be doing on each day. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of a taster. On the first day, of course, we arrive, um, you'll be flying into Maputo, um, which is the capital of Mozambique. And um, we'll have everybody, because depending on where people are traveling from, they'll come in at different times. Um, you can come on on the day before, which I would also recommend, um, especially if you're coming from the States, uh, just so that you can acclimatize. And then we'll do welcome and a dinner and have an early night. The first morning, We'll meet with Andy and the research team at the pool um, for dolphin snorkeling course. So I'll be um, introducing uh, the resident dolphins. We'll get to find out a little bit more about each of them, the code of conduct and other information that we need before we have our first encounter in the ocean with the dolphins. And then we'll do a, a session with Jackie where we'll be uh, sharing more about animal communication uh, and what to expect. Yeah. On the 21st, um, so that's day three, we will do our first sunrise dolphin encounter. Uh, we might go out for the um, first dolphin encounter actually on uh, the 20th in the afternoon. So this will be our second one. Um, and uh, we'll have a really, um, uh, an ability to, to really put into practice what we've been learning with Jackie. Um, I will then do a session with you on something that I call uh, conscious living. And I'll talk a little bit more about those, about that for those that are coming. Um, but it really is based on the seven C principles of how we can engage what happens in nature into our own lives so that we can manage the direct impact that we as individuals are having on the planet and how we can give back. Um, then we'll have a lovely easy hike to the lighthouse uh, and a reserve uh, talk at sunset, which should be really lovely. The following day, uh, we will spend the full day at the Maputo uh, Special Reserve uh, doing a game drive and then have a, a nice easy debrief afterwards of all the experiences that we've had. And then the following day, uh, we'll do the dolphin and whale encounter. Uh, which we will go out in the boat and go up further. I think we're going to go further up the coast um, and off to the reef uh, where we can do uh, snorkeling. And if people are not comfortable to do that, it's fine. They can stay on the boat. And those that are comfortable can then get in the water and do that. And then in the afternoon, we'll do a lovely cleanup of the beach. That's you know part of our giving back and contribution to um, our adventure. And then the next day we'll have another morning uh, encounter and a session with Jackie. And then in the afternoon do a review of all the dolphin diaries, videos and images. Now Angie will be doing that for us. Um, she will have a camera and will be taking photographs for us. So you don't need to worry about um, doing that, but of course bring your own uh, camera if you wish, with pleasure. Um, and certainly bring land cameras um, that we can use uh, for all the other uh, opportunities we'll be able to take photographs. And then the final day will be our farewell and people will depart to go to uh, Maputo to go home. Or we do have an add-on to it, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a bit, uh, to South Africa and uh, you'll be transferred uh, to uh, that afterwards. So that gives you um, just a general idea of what our daily schedule would look like. Um, these are, and I wanted to share this with you, these are the unique elements that make uh, our trip completely different to pretty much anything else that's out there. And I've done a significant amount of research um, because we want to make sure that our adventures are not, uh, you know, focused commercially. 
Now, our adventures are really about life-changing opportunities for individuals who really want to transform from the inside out and have a real love um, for nature and the animals that really call to them. So what we do is we have a couple of pre-event online sessions where we, whoever has signed up to join the uh, trip, um, get to know each other and we set our intentions. And this is done obviously prior to the event, just so that we can really connect uh, and understand what everybody else's intentions are. Um, and this really helps us uh, when we arrive, we already know quite a bit about each other, so there's none of that awkwardness <laughs> which you can get. Um, we will also be doing some pre-event interspecies communication training with Jackie. And that is really just to help anybody who has never done um, uh, interspecies communication before. And even if you have, it's always great to learn from uh, new trainers uh, because they have all of their own individual experiences and many of them have a variety of different tools uh, which you can then just add to your toolbox uh, to help you uh, improve your animal communication if you have already got experience. Um, however, this is really just an opportunity to help you uh, to use a, a system that can help uh, for you to connect with the animals. Um, the, this is very much part of our trip and, and, and is the foundation for what we like to do because we want to deepen that experience, that personal experience with you. This is not about how successful you are or not at communicating and getting images or getting messages or anything like that. There is no pressure at all on that um, element of it. It really is just um, to give you some tools um, get you to practice if you've got some time before you come on the trip and really just help you to connect at a, diff at a, at a deeper level with the experiences that we have. Um, I'll also be doing a, a conscious living uh, session um, with nature and uh, just explaining a little bit more about uh, the seven C principles that I talk about. Obviously, you'll have a full-time event manager and coordinator take care of your every need. That is me. I'm on call 24 hours a day, managing everything before, during, and after the trip. Uh, On-site training and application with um, Jackie, our interspecies communicator, for the full seven days. So that's a real treat to have that kind of time with any interspecies communicator where you can actually put what you've learned into practice and really ask for advice and direction. Uh, Jackie does a lot more than interspecies communication. She works with people, um, helping them with all kinds of you know, potential uh, challenges that may come up, um, historic things that have happened before. Um, and so we're really there to uh, help support you for those seven days, uh, maximizing the opportunity you can with the um, experiences with the dolphins and the other animals. Uh, private, uh, it's very private. It's a small group of individuals. We can only take 10 people in total. So it's eight guests and myself and Jackie. Um, and it's specifically designed to maximize our opportunity and time with communing with animals. Uh, and, you know, to have as much fun as possible. Uh, obviously, the visit to the Maputu Special Reserve. And uh, we have some lovely quad bikes, which we're going to be able to use on most days, um, just to go into the village if you need to, to go up and down um, the beach and, you know, have um, as much fun as possible. And then uh, we organise some post-event meetups and follow-ups and just finding out how people are doing, you know, what new revelations have come to them, um, especially talking about all the photographs and sharing those with each other um, because we're really interested in the, in the long-term relationship with people that come on our trips with us. And we're, we, we hope to uh, bring them into our Sacred Wildlife Project, which we're going to be launching uh, next month, which is really about, um, you know, a, a community of like-minded individuals who love animals and want to help in any way they can uh, to save them and protect them. So that's really uh, just the main points that makes our um, adventure a little bit different. So your contribution, um, to this adventure in order to join us 
is in euros, it's 2,997 per person sharing. There is a 300 euro single supplement um, and it is limited to three, just depending on availability. And we'll be able to do that once we have the minimum number of people, which is five, that we need to, um, or, uh, to run this event. Um, and I try to make it as financially uh, feasible and available to as many people as possible. And, you know, our organization is a non-for-profit organization. We are not looking to make money out of this. We're really looking to help change people's lives and educate them. Um, and so the, you know, the cost is directly related to, um, the contribution directly related to the costs. And I've done quite a lot of research on it, uh, looking at what other people in the UK, Europe, or America are doing. And I know that you know, for what we're offering and all the added benefits that we give, um, this is the, the best available uh, value for money uh, opportunity that we can offer to you. There is a discount of uh, just under 300 euros for the first three bookings. We have two people who've already taken those up already. So we only have actually one left. <laughs> Um, a few people heard about this before we even went live with promoting it and uh, had already booked with us. We do need a minimum of five guests uh, to make it work um, and a maximum of 10, uh, which means with the two places already gone, we've got six places left. And then there's Jackie and myself. Um, <clears throat> there are additional bonuses um, with around 450 euros. There's one-to-one -one interspecies communication session with Jackie herself where you can talk about your animals, um, whether um, they're in, in spirit or alive, where you have a particular a challenge or issue with them so that you can uh, do that on a one-to-one -one basis. We've also got four fantastic e-books on animal communication uh, that Jackie has written which are uh, quite in-depth and a, a real gift. Group healing sessions throughout the adventures. Um, we'll be doing those as and when uh, we, we all feel it's required. They're very powerful in helping us uh, to move through things that may be coming up for us. As you get with all um, adventures of this type, it's very intimate, it is very personal. Um, these encounters with the animals can uh, really significantly change you. And, um, you know, there's a process of healing that we go through with regards to that. And I have to say, um, Angie was sharing with me the other day that a lot of the dolphins will pick up uh, any health issues potentially that people might have um, while we're swimming and may even um, decide to send you some sonar healing. And they're actually, they're, their clicking sound actually changes frequency um, and Angie recognizes it straight away and they may even, um, you know, come around you a few times and they'll be sending you that healing because dolphins are very um, intelligent that way and they're very perceptive and they can feel energy. And so if they feel that they think they can help you, then they do, which is just incredible. Um, you'll also get two conscious lifestyle sessions with myself and that will be very much on a one-to-one -one basis about you know, what's happening in your life and, and uh, how can we implement those seven C principles more effectively in your life to really help you feel that you're uh, maximizing those opportunities. And then you get priority for the discounts for any future adventures um, if you wish to come on. We have one to um, the elephants in Kenya and we're organizing another one for uh, the white lions in South Africa and the gorillas in Rwanda and Uganda. Uh, and the spirit bears in Canada. So those are a few that are coming up uh, over the next couple of years. So uh, a little bit about our add-on to it. We will cross over the border from Ponta uh, de Ora to um, the Kruger National Park. It's about three hours drive, which is uh, Kruger National Park is the largest uh, reserve. Um, it's one of the six largest reserves in the world. Um, it has a phenomenal amount of animals, uh, ranging uh, from the big five to many, many, many thousands of others. Uh, and we'll also be going to see the Blyder River Canyon, which is um, a teeny-weeny version of the Grand Canyon in the US, 
if you like. Um, it is a phenomenal uh, escarpment, basically where the land just changes and drops off. The picture you see down there on the bottom left is of the three rondavals. Rondavals are round buildings with uh, normally thatched roofs. And so that's why those are called the three rondavals. Um, it's for five days. Uh, it's a great opportunity um, to uh, extend your experience um, in that part of the world. The contribution there is 1,450 for single or 1,300 sharing all inclusive. Um, it is actually booked directly with our tour operator, so it won't be booked with me, but I've helped to create um, this adventure and put it together so we maximize the opportunity of seeing the animals. Um, and we will end up uh, in Johannesburg. So if you do do the add-on tour, you'll be flying out of Johannesburg and not out of Maputo. Um, so we'll spend three nights in the Kruger National Park at three different locations, and then one night on our way back uh, to Johannesburg. Um, and so this is a purely an optional extra. Uh, both myself and Jackie will definitely be doing it. Um, that lovely picture in the middle um, that you see there is um, uh, what we call God's window. <laughs> it's just looking over the beautiful um, mountains and rivers in South Africa. So we'll be uh, going to that view uh, for sure. Okay, that's it. That's our presentation. Um, a little bit about what we're going to be doing. I hope that has inspired you, informed you. And if anybody has any questions, I'm going to stop sharing now so that um, you can see me. Hopefully everybody can see me. Is that all right? Yep. Great. So any questions, anybody? <laughs> Julie? Uh, no, it sounds absolutely amazing. I don't think um, my funds, unfortunately, were stretched to that at the moment, but um, it's certainly something I'd keep in mind if you did one in the future that I could maybe work towards Fantastic. and maybe get a bit more confident in the water. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, but people have life things on anyway, so you're safe. Yeah, yeah. But it sounds absolutely amazing. I'm sure everybody will have a fabulous time and learn a lot as well. So, oh, bless you. Thank you. It, Thanks, it Julie. And, amazing. Uh, yeah, we, we are hoping that we will be doing this each year. I might have to, it depends on, because of the number of different adventures we've got, going, I can't do them all every year. So we might, no. be, you know, doing them one this year. Yeah, year. yeah. Um, and also I tweak them as we do them. Um, and change them up a little bit. Sometimes um, the uh, animal communicators can't do those particular trips. So we, we have some others that we uh, put into to that place. Um, so yes, you know, always uh, my website uh, keeps it all up to date. Uh, just sign up to our newsletter and you'll find out any of the new ones. Um, also, um, uh, what was I gonna say? There was something else I was going to say and it got straight out of my head. Yes. Anyway, we will notify you um, as soon as we know if we're going to have dates for 2000 and, oh, 2020. 20. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's been, been really, really nice to see what, what you're going to do and how everybody's going to be involved. So, yeah, lovely. Bless you. Lovely to see you in person. Thank you. Yes, and you. Thanks, Marion. Um, I know that you're online somewhere. <laughs> yeah, had, had to dash off but it says that it all sounds awesome okay thanks. So, oh she's back again <laughs> i was actually going to say goodbye on, on screen i just thought i'd say goodbye in person so thanks oh, that was really that was really awesome it sounds amazing and yeah if there's any way i can get to go on that or be part of your kind of adventures absolutely i'm going to it sounds brilliant all right darling Lots of love. Lots of love. Lots of love to you. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.